I'm Wesley, and welcome to day six of International Zine Month. In celebration, I have dyed my hair, and it totally smells like grape soda. The entire time while I was putting on, it smelled super strongly of grape soda. Um, and with this super violet color, it's so funny because yesterday when I had the bleach, you know, copper copper blonde kind of thing, I felt like Kim Pines, and now that I have this bright purple, I feel like Ramona Flowers, and I'm totally into it. Anyway, so today is, the, the official prompt for today is, Zine Pride Day, explore LGBTQIA plus zines, buy, share, and read zines by people of marginalized sexual orientations and gender identities, check out the Queer Zine Archive Project. So, there's a lot for me to talk about today, and hopefully you'll see why today is my absolute favorite zine uh, prompt. So I want to start by mentioning what the Queer Zine Archive Project is, since that is part of the prompt. This is a free online um, resource, I guess you'd say. It's just a project that works to catalog and archive and make available for reading online many zines written by queer people throughout history. I think the majority of them probably come from the 80s and 90s, um, and it is a really great resource to be able to um, read a lot of old queer zines and just document queer history and queer history through zines, and it's a really amazing project. You should definitely definitely check it out. They you can just uh, they have highlight like a random zine every day. Um, and it's just a great place to pick up and read one. Um, so Queer Zine Archive Project, definitely check that out. I'm going to shake things up a little bit and talk about the free zines that I want to highlight today first. Um, I have two of them <laughs> that are both really, really good. One is called NB Life by Ray White, or compiled by Ray White, and this is a compilation zine of a whole bunch of different stories and experiences from non-binary people. Right now there are a handful of free copies that the uh, compiler slash creator has made available for free download, or if you have the funds and you can spare it, you can also pitch in, I think pay what you want and it's recommended two dollars to um, download it at price without um, without taking up one of the free ones, but, you know, if you can't pay for that, or it's just not, it's just not in your budget, and you really, you know, want to read these stories, and it would re be really beneficial for you, then I encourage you to pick up one of the community copies, because that's what they're there for, you know? This was actually, I think, the only uh, compilation zine that I have seen by entirely non-binary people, and it was really interesting, uh, especially as I've been working on one of my own zines about my gender, because I suppose I am, like, technically non-binary, but it is a term and a description that I have sometimes felt disconnected from, and hearing about a variety of experiences is always a really nice thing, because it feels like there can be a place for me among that. The next scene is titled Queer My Ass, and this was a an, this is another compilation zine that was put together by attendees of the 2015 Antwerp Queer Arts Festival, and I actually just found this this morning because, as I've mentioned before, I'm going to be tabling at the Queer Zest Zine Fest, and one of the other tablers has, you know, I was checking out their list of um, zines that they had on offer, and uh, this was one that they have put up on their website for free to read, and it is it is really great. It's a combination of art and collage and uh, stor personal stories, and it's just a really nice little collection. Um, this is available for free on their website, and I'll put a link to both Queer My Ass and NB Life down below. So the next thing I want to do is show off a couple of my very favorite zines about gender that I have come across. And frankly, I have too few zines about gender, considering how much I love reading them. So if you 
also know of any good ones or if you have your own zine about gender and gender experience definitely let me know because I will totally buy it I am really you know I really want to have a greater collection of that the first one I have to show off is Every Thug is a Lady Adventures Without Gender and this is by Julia F who runs the Crap Pandemic Zine Distro and Julia is totally awesome I sell my zines with them through Crap Pandemic and you will probably hear me mention that Zine Distro many times on this channel because I love it very much. Um, this was their zine from pretty, it's pretty old. It's, it's 2011. So I guess it's not like the oldest thing in the world, but it's, you know, relatively old. And um, it is a, just a big chunky per zine about their experience with gender and, um, at the time, I actually, I don't know if this is still the term that they use for themselves or if they have a term that they use for themselves right now, but this particular zine is about um, their experience as neutra, which is basically means like null gender. It's like without gender. It's sort of similar to the word agender. Um, and so that's what most of this is about. It's just sort of experiences surrounding that and there are personal stories there's a bunch of angst there's fun little lists like places I buy clothes rated in terms of dirty looks um there's little comics about how other people react to them and and their look um and then there's some happier stuff about just positive experiences with their gender or or lack thereof and um it's generally just it's just a really validating zine for me and i i really like it um it took me too long to pick this up and i think it's just because i've been sort of hesitant to really think about gender for the last couple years um you know i guess i'm not surprised that it took me this long to to pick this up, but I'm really glad that I did because um, I feel like it echoes a lot of my own experiences. I think my favorite uh, section about this is titled All the Best Cowboys Have Daddy Issues, and this is basically about a really shit experience that Julia had with a therapist when trying to seek a therapist for bipolar disorder, and the therapist focuses all the issues on, well, you know, you are acting out in, and, and pretending to be, to be trans or to be gender neutral or, or agender as a way of getting back at your parents. And this is clear from the way you dress and the way that you act and all this bullshit. And like, <laughs> and like, holy shit, this is definitely one of my favorites. Every Thug is a Lady, Adventures Without Gender by Julia F., who um, has now recently gotten into a new place, had to move because of shitty landlord, and um, so Crap Pandemic is going to be up and running again very soon for you to order from. The next scene that I want to show off is actually a little zine series by Kirsty Fife, and it is titled Hard Femme. And basically, it's about their experience as a hard femme, what that gender experience is. And I really enjoyed this. I picked it up because the title was intriguing, to be honest, and because I wondered how much I would be able to relate to this. Um, it It's sort of, from what I gather, it's sort of similar to being a tomboy. Um, it has similar vibes, and I've always felt similar to being a tomboy. Like, when I was growing up, that's how I would identify myself as, as a tomboy, you know, back before I figured out trans stuff and, you know, back when people <laughs> didn't have words like demiboy or non-binary or anything like that. And it is a, sort of about their expression of femininity. Here's a really nice um, page to show off, I think. And it says here, My bruises are my history. And so you kind of get the idea of, like, um, 
you know, a hard femme is really about, like, an expression of femininity that is not, um, that is not feminine. It, does that make any sense? Or, like, a, a very, a, a tough-as-nails kind of, kind of femininity that I just, I really appreciate, and I really like having words to, um, to put to it and words to describe it as, and... Um, it's just really cool. So it's sort of like, it's mostly persing about their own experience with gender and, and some things related to gender. And I really enjoy reading it. There are four issues so far and I have all of them and they're just, they're just all, what can I say? They're all really great. And now I'm going to flip the camera around and do a little flip through of my gender zines that I have been working on um, that are in progress or newly finished and I should hopefully soon have them available for you to buy if you are interested. No pressure. <laughs> All right, let me just turn it around and get, get this over with, you know. This is the work in progress for Unfair Maiden 2, which is the second issue of my Perzine Unfair Maiden. And this one, I am focusing on gender and specifically um, what it means to be a demi boy for me, because that is the term that I most identify with. Um, so I'm just going to do a little flip through here of some of the work in progress that I've been doing. Um, I don't know that I actually have a lot to say on it. Um, I really, really like this page. And I feel like this has captured my gender in a way that um, I haven't been able to do before. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just really like this collection. Every single one of these pictures is total vibe for me. <laughs> um, so I'm really happy to have that. I have a very long section titled Why Did I Stop Testosterone? Which is going to get more decorated. Um, but that's, that's this section. Here I have a few things planned. This is how messy my zine making gets when you're working physically and you decide to rearrange a couple of pages or insert some new pages. It means that you get a lot of uh, places that you have already glued that you have to scratch off. <laughs> so that's what that is. Um, this is my centerfold so far. I have a few little details, but you know, here are some self-portraits. I'm really proud of this page. Um, from sheepish she-her to demi-boy bombshell. Um, here I'll have a few fun and games, things to do. I like including those. It harkens back to my days on the school newspaper that I made with my friends. Um, I'm going to talk here. I've got a little more about um, transness throughout history. Um, I've got some gender stories about just, you know, very gendered experiences, I guess, that I've had. This, I think, is really important, and I feel like I want to, I don't know, record me saying, you know, delivering this essay or something like that. Um, and it's basically just like some notes that I have on how a lot of people, even within the LGBT community, sort of look down on, um, words that are too specific, if that makes sense, like demi boy. Um, and so this is sort of a, a critique of that. This one, dear cis people, these are things I hate to hear. <laughs> I really, you know, this was fun and infuriating to write. And then I'll have a little conclusion page there. And the cover is being done, I've mentioned this before, but it's being created by Aisha Mira Yashin, who made the Sapphic Enchantress tarot deck, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, the next scene that I have been working on, this is my first, you know, printing just off my home printer, and I'll go and print more later. It's titled, I Was a Teenage Girl, <laughs> A Trans Guy's Look Back at His Girl's Health Class. Um, where basically I took a class at my middle school 
um, we were all required to take a health class, and they had it split up for girls and boys. I was in seventh grade, and my class was titled Oh My Goddess. Um, and basically, I loved that school a lot, but this was the one class that I had a lot of trouble with, and I had a lot of issues with with bullying and rejection, and so at the end of that um, class, all the girls that were in it put together a zine. I guess you'd call it a zine. <laughs> um, and so I went through our old zine and cut it up and made a bunch of commentary <laughs> on it um, as a way of kind of understanding my experience, my experience in that class, and just what it what it was like being somebody who did not totally conform to their gender, you know, back before I realized that's what I was doing, if that makes any sense. Um, so this was actually pretty fun and pretty fast to make. I wasn't originally intending on making a zine about this. It just kind of happened. Um, and I'm pretty excited about it. It turned out longer than I thought. Like, I think, I think it'll be an, an, a neat little, a neat little zine. <laughs> so I'll have that up in my, you know, in my page soon. And then this is a little mini zine that my sister made, actually. Um, she is also trans and um, is more recently out than I am. And she made this little bonus mini zine to go inside of Unfair Maiden 2. So once Unfair Maiden 2 is done, if you order it, <laughs> then you will also be getting this little bonus mini zine. So, there you go. That'll be fun. This is this is the first time that I've really made zines about my gender or really, like, actively focused on my gender for such a long time at once. Does that make any sense? Um, I don't know. So I guess this was... This... The, creating these zines, I feel like, um, helped provide a lot of clarity for me on my gender and my experience, and, um, you know, I, I almost feel like I can say things in zines that I can't even say in my journal. <laughs> Maybe that sounds dumb, but, you know, it's just such a, it's such a great form of self-expression for me because it forces me to think about things in a way so that I can actually explain them and and put it together in a semi-organized sentence structure kind of thing and go deep on things but I still feel like I can be really open and I don't know I just I've really enjoyed making these zines and and I say here at the beginning I don't know what my goal is with transitioning but I do know what my goal is with this zine I want to come to terms with my experience of gender become more comfortable with calling myself a demi boy without shame and try to get to a point that I'm self-assured enough that thinking about gender isn't frightening anymore. And I think that I... I think that's been a success so far. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a little nervous. It's still a little weird saying the word demi-boy out loud, especially for a lot of people when they don't really understand what it means. But, um, you know, I think it's I think it's overall been a success. And if you want to know what being a demi-boy means check out this zine once it's done. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you tomorrow for day seven. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>